Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Now that we all have our GPS devices in our cars or on our phones, we can find our way anywhere, or so you would think. All you have to do is input your desired destination into your miracle machine, and it will determine the way you are to go. You can pick a location, a specific address, hopefully one that actually exists, hopefully the correct one, and it will show you how to get there. You can pick the kind of place to which you want to go, a store, a restaurant, a park, or a playground, and your GPS will find the nearest one. You can choose how you want to go, whether the shortest route or the quickest, staying on major highways or avoiding them. And it won't be long before the right route is laid out for you. Now that we all have GPS, we should always get where we want to go. So, how do you get to happiness, or peace, or reconciliation, or contentment, or courage, or hope, or respect, or integrity, or love, or any of the states we all want to get to, but no GPS will take you? Just about everybody was on the road these past few days, going near or far, headed someplace that was not nearly as important as the purpose for which each journey was undertaken. And no matter how many times that pleasant little voice says, you have arrived at your destination, many people knew deep in their hearts they still were not where they wanted to be. When the Bible tells the story of the birth of Jesus, the long-awaited coming of God from heaven to earth, a lot of other individuals are also set in motion. Mary goes to see her relative Elizabeth. Mary and Joseph go from Nazareth to Bethlehem, and later from Bethlehem to Egypt, and later still from Egypt back to Nazareth. Angels go from heaven to to all points in Palestine. Shepherds go from grazing fields to a glowing stable and then all over town telling what they saw. And fascinating foreigners find a star that starts them on a quest to find the one who will change their world forever. Their astrology will lead them to Jerusalem. The scriptures of the Jews will lead them to Bethlehem and the baby they seek. And a dream will provide the divine direction that will lead them home a different way. What can we learn from these learned individuals, these wise men from the East? These were men who carefully observed the wonders of their world and found in what they saw the first few steps in a faithful journey of faith. They saw a star rising, a natural phenomenon. They saw something happen and assumed it had some significance in their world and in their lives. They were wise to think so. Even though natural occurrences never tell you all you need to know about the way you need to go. It is a wise person who pays attention to the signs of the times, who assumes that there is meaning in all that takes place. The creator of all things created all things to conform to and serve a particular purpose in a perfect plan. There is, in all created things, evidence still of the Creator. 
and some faint echo of his original purpose even after creation's catastrophic fall. For the wise men of old, whose business was to study the heavens, the rising of a special star was just such an echo, an omen, a suggestion that something divine was in the offing. And they charted a course according to the light they had been given, inadequate as it was to lead them to their ultimate destination. They did not wait where they were until they understood everything about where they were to go. They saw enough in the world they knew to do something different than they had been doing. God sent them a sign in the natural world around them, and from that moment, they began going a different way to find out more. Today, or tomorrow, or next week, or next year, something will happen in the life of every person that will be God's sign signaling that person to go a different way. Many will think nothing of it, ignore it as just an accident, a fate, a coincidence, signifying nothing significant or sacred, and go on exactly as before. But some will wonder, why did this happen? And what does it mean? And what should I do about it? And some of those will start going a different way and take the first faltering steps, the first essential steps, in a journey that will bring them face to face with God, just as God intends. The wise men, having seen a star that suggested to them they needed to make a change, went to Jerusalem, the holy city. Now the star did not lead them there. They just knew they needed to consult the religious experts to get more guidance about the way they should go. General revelation, which is God's communicating his character and will in nature and the otherwise routine events of life, general revelation motivated them to get started doing what God wanted them to do, but it would take special revelation the word of God recorded in sacred scripture to show them where they would find the goal of their spiritual quest. It was the Bible that led them to Bethlehem and to Jesus. All sorts of people may experience an occasional impulse toward religion and moral living. If all people are created in the, in the image of God as the Bible reveals, then there must be a spiritual dimension in every one of us, a capacity to interact with God. Unfortunately, our religious impulses, corrupted as they are by our human sinfulness, are insufficient in power and purity to satisfy God. The way we go about gratifying our inadequate religious inclinations on our own won't work with God. On the other hand, fortunately, God's word leads us to the place where our unworthy efforts and inclinations can be corrected and completed by God's incarnation in Jesus so that we are made acceptable to him by him. The wise men didn't find God's Messiah in the East, the familiar surroundings of their homes and work, where wisdom was valued above all things. They did not meet the Messiah in Jerusalem, the place where religion was practiced and preserved. But when they came to the place where Jesus was, the star that started their journey and the scriptures that directed it converged, and they found and worshipped the Savior. The Savior who is Lord of all the stars in the heaven and subject of all the words in sacred scripture. And they gave him, the Christ child, everything they had. Gifts fit for a king, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now, it was a custom in those days and those countries 
that important people who came to see great kings would bring the king's impressive gifts. And they would receive even greater gifts from the king in return. The wise men came to the baby Jesus in the customary way. But what could this helpless infant, born a king in such humble circumstances, give them that would exceed and overshadow the value of their offerings? The answer is grace. The forgiveness of sins, the promise of salvation, reconciliation with God, the hope of glory, and the ability to go from that moment on a different way. They had seen a star. They had opened God's word. They had come into the presence of Jesus and worshipped him. And then they heard from God directly in a dream. And what did God tell them? Go a different way. This spiritual journey started with their going a different way. It reached its climax by their going a different way. And it was concluded the same way, by going a different way home. It is not surprising that anyone who has met the Savior of the world and worshipped him would go through the rest of life a different way. The whole purpose for the appearance of this king of the Jews and everybody else was to enable people throughout the world to go a different way. A way they, we, could not go until we saw his star. Or whatever in our world he used to first get our attention and then opened his word, which always opens a world of revelation to us. But more than that, by seeing Jesus and worshiping him and laying our treasures before him and hearing what his spirit would say to our hearts, we are led a different way, a wonderful, powerful, happy, holy, redeemed way home. As it turned out, the wise men couldn't go back from Bethlehem, from Jesus, the same way they came. It was too dangerous. For what God was doing in sending his son to Bethlehem and to earth for the people of God was going to generate opposition, and it was too dangerous for these wise men whom God had sent to see Jesus to go back the way they came. There are always those who do not want the world or anybody in it to go a different way. There are those who will not see the signs God sends and don't want anyone else to see them either. There are those who will not listen to God's word and don't want anyone else to hear it. There are those who will go any way they have to to avoid meeting Jesus who will go out of their way to keep anyone else from going the different way Jesus leads those who find him and worship him. To avoid those people, wise men and women go with Jesus a different way. And the different way of Jesus, as it turns out, leads those who follow it always safely home. GPS, God's positioning system, God's precious Savior.